It was 2005 and my first ever trip in a four-wheel drive was coming to an end. I had tested myself, made mistakes, which is no different 19 years later, and I had survived. My video camera was struggling, and I think it may have died near the end of the trip. Consumer cameras were not designed to go through what I'd put it through. We started the day in the spectacular Cape Range before making our way south down the coast. Well, that was the plan, except Yardy Creek, which was, I'd been told, was a sandbar, wasn't. And so 70 kilometre backtrack was on the, uh, was on to take us back down the coast to Carnarvon and Kalbarri. Please don't forget to give a like, comment, and share if you like what we're doing. Thanks for watching. The last time I was in Exmouth was 1969-70, somewhere around there. And even though we did the Charles Knife Canyon or the Charles Knife Road, my memory bank didn't prepare me for the awesome spectacle that I was about to see this trip, let me tell you. I don't remember any of this. Now this is just the beginning of it. On both sides of the road it gets awesome and scary. <laughs> And the wind fairly whips up over the valley, let me tell you. This is looking straight down the hill again, slightly different angle. This one's on the opposite, this one's on the opposite side of the road. This one gets awesome. And bloody sheep. Looking at the car door straight down. And immediately out the other side, this one. So we're actually running along a ridge between two of these gorges. The gorge running off to the right hand side. Again, straight down. This is probably the bit I remember the most. Looking down the canyon, but that's not the most spectacular view. Still to come. Speaking of spectacular views, what about that one down over the coastline? Standing off in the distance, over towards Onslow. Now, quite literally, this is driving across a ridge because to the right, it's straight down. To the left, it's straight down. So, actually, standing out on the ridge now. Looking across, and that is that's a long way down there. Look at that trail along the bottom there, trees down the bottom. Awesome. Scary too. That's the right hand one heading off that way. And then another view back down the hill on this side. Now that actually isn't a track, that is a riverbed. It's a river course. Not a specky but green. But it just gives you an idea of how the canyon flows. And then look at that view. Absolutely awesome. Okay, we're going to move on to Shot Hole Canyon. Have a bow paper bag. Suppose there had to be one the raw prawn, well, the giant prawn. This is MG Kalis Fisheries up here. And uh, that's their prawn. Okay, we're now right at the end of the Shot Hole Canyon, and at the deepest part of it. Going to head back out again. Um, and basically, the road runs along the base of the canyon. 
Something I've noticed in WA is that Calm done a great job of providing steps and things, making things a lot easier for people to get to uh, viewing areas. What I've seen in other, well, certainly in the Northern Territory. That's the end of the car park. And then the walk trail goes on up the hill. Basically, it's just taking us up, I think, to give us a better look at uh, some of the other uh, canyons and gorges that are here. And that's where we've come in. That's the way out. That's where we're going now. Gee, nature got some awesome shapes, don't they? Now I have to confess that I got listening to the crit, but listening to the sports thing on the radio, and I haven't actually taken any video of the first uh, kilometre. But uh, basically, it's all very much the same. It's um, it's, it's a, a canyon. It's got a road down the base of it, and uh, yeah. There's nothing very spectacular about this one. Not certainly. Maybe it looks better from up the top. I don't know, but uh, certainly from down here, um, we we have done other canyons that have certainly uh, been better than this. This, of course, would be a river river bed normally, which is why the trees are running along are along the road like this. Yeah, it's just a straight, just a straight canyon here. Nothing, nothing real outstanding at all, to my way of thinking. Not compared to some that we've been through. Now this is the Shot Hole Canyon in uh, in Gexmouth. Out here to the right of me is the um, communications base of the Australian Navy and Air Force and Australian Forces. The Harold E. Holt base is back further towards town. We're actually now on the ring road. We're heading around to, for the, uh, well, we'll say ring road, we're now going around the uh, the coast the coast road which will take us down the, uh, the west coast of the uh, Cape uh, back towards uh, Coral Bay. Well, the tide's in at the moment, but uh, you can see part of it. There's a wreck of the, uh, I think it's the MV, Bill Dura. It's uh, just just off the coast, and a little bit close to the uh, to the coastline here. This is right on the northern tip, I think, of the Northwest Cape. It's quite windy here today. It's not really all that warm. Well, all that hot. Nice pleasant day actually. Now it's looking back towards the uh, communication station and then that's the way we're heading. Included in the way we're heading is the lighthouse. So I think we'll see. Okay, this is the lighthouse on the hill. And all around us is ocean. Now that's looking down which is the way we're going. And... Okay. Well, this is looking back down towards... the out there. I don't know whether it's going to show up on TV or not. I can't see it through there, but there's an oil we get there somewhere. This is a beach along the coastal area that uh, is a boat launching area. It's also um, got uh, glass bottom boats taking people out to the reef. Have a look because of course this is the Ningaloo Reef that runs down this part of the, uh, the ocean. And where those waves are breaking out there, it's the reef. Yeah, this is the mangrove sanctuary. And very much further north from here, we'd be being warned about crocodiles and things. So here. You can 
it's, there's all sorts of birds and things living in this uh, in these mangroves. And the other thing that's starting to happen now because of the rain is wildflowers. Goes around. Thank God. Okay, we're going to go and have a little bit of a look. Now, down amongst this set of mangroves, I've actually got a bird hide. There's a few of them out there to start with. In fact, there's not a lot out there at all today, but it is quite magic that these hides get put here so that the person who is really keen on watching the birds and watching the fauna and the life and that sort of thing is able to do so. Let's get moving. This is all part of the Mingaloo business. Northwest National, Northwest Cape National Park, I think it is, but Mingaloo National Park, I guess. It's the reef out there. And there's people around there fishing, I think. The only snake I've seen on the trip, it's a dead one. How about that? Okay, we have been foiled. Yardy, Ningaloo Road, single lane access, four wheel drive vehicles only. Problem is, there's no sandbar. Tide is in, that's not going to go down probably another five or six hours. So we are stuffed. This means that we've got to turn around and go all the way around again. This is Yardy Creek, and that's the uh, gorge in the Can Do Boat Tours up there. Okay, I'm having a lot of trouble with this camera. I don't know how much longer it's going to last for, but uh, this is Coral Bay. I decided I'm not going to stop here tonight. I'm going to keep going to Manila. The reason being is that uh, there's seven million young people in town. Now, I've got no problems with young people, but I am getting sick of getting put in camping areas. Wake at all hours of the bloody night because of people plenty yapping and talking and carrying on. And uh, to my way of thinking, I much prefer to camp out in the bush where there's some civilization, you know, lizards, goannas, and things like that. Okay, I'm having massive troubles with this video camera, so I am heading for, uh, for Manilia uh, for the reasons I just explained. Tropical Capricorn. The first time we've seen that, I think. We might have seen it before. Check back through the tapes. Tropical Capricorn, and it is 5.30 Saturday. The whatever it is, I've lost total track of the date. Sunday morning, half past seven. I've been on the road since half past six. I just thought I'd... Uh, See firstly whether this video camera is buddy working or not, and also just give you a little bit of an idea of what's growing on the side of the road. Yes, going river is dry. I did find slight problems with our thumb pumps at the centre of the As we approach Carnarvon, and here in Carnarvon at the moment, there's a lot of. Uh, there's a great bananas at Carnarvon, don't they? That's right. It's been a long time since I've been up here. Long time. There's a turn off to Mount Augustus. Maybe we should do that. Certainly, I intend going out to Gascoigne Junction one day. Carbon 12 kilometres. 
Sorry. Okay, we're within the uh, Carnarvon uh, area, five kilometres into the town centre now. And there's tourist parks, we just passed the turn off to Geraldton. Um, we'll uh, come on back here shortly to make our run south. But uh, we'll try and find something to eat. I've had no breakfast this morning. My very rarely re uh, recollections of Carnarvon as a very little boy with my grandfather and grandmother. We came up here and the whaling station was still running. As we drove out, a plane took up over the road. And that's the airport. That's the airstrip. It's almost in town. I don't know if I can improve on that picture very much. There we go. Okay, this is similar to what I recall all those years ago. Parking down the centre of the street. Uh, obviously the businesses have changed a wee bit and everything else has changed. I don't remember all of a lot from when I was that age anyway, but... Well, I certainly don't remember it that way, but yeah, it's uh, I do remember Carnarvon. Obviously, everything is improved along here, it's been rebuilt, or all those sorts of things have happened. Our back pathways, Kingston Smith Mail Run, end. So, there you go, even we've been on it, and uh, we've now come to the end of it. Okay, this is Carnarvon's one mile jetty. Now, I don't know whether it's a mile long or not, I'm a, but uh, their uh, pylons apparently uh, over the years have created an artificial reef, which are apparently is responsible for the fantastic fishing you get off the jetty. The Carnarvon Heritage Group have uh, rest fully restored the last train to actually run out along there and they actually take people out on the uh, Jetty on the train, you pay for the ride, obviously. If you want to walk on the jetty, you pay $3. It all goes towards the cost of restoration of uh, what they have here. As with all these areas, there is your uh, historical type implements and your busload of tourists, would you believe. Now I have to admit to a degree of confusion at the moment because in my mind I seem to recall as a very young child being up here with my grandparents and going home feeling very nauseous from the uh, stench from the whaling uh, operation that uh, had been on the jetty that we were at. And I'm positive it was Carnarvon, but there's no mention of whaling here at this point in time. And there's our one mile jetty from a little further around. It does go out a fair way, doesn't it? But is that a mile? Mind you, there is a bit back through the mangroves as well. It's a fair distance, I guess. Put it this way, I wouldn't like to try and run it in four minutes. But if, what do you have Well, they just can't help themselves, can they? I mean, we had the big prawn up in uh, Exmouth, and uh, okay, it's got to add to the collection the big banana here in Carnarvon. Okay, we've had breakfast and it's 20 past nine. We're heading to Geraldton. Now, yeah, how would you like that in your backyard picking up your TV programs? Actual fact, this is the uh, Overseas Telecommunications Centre uh, Commission and it's the Satellite Earth Station for Carnarvon. 
thing to get a bit more of the uh, wildflower stuff happening up here now. Starting to get a bit of a change in the countryside. It's been fairly flat and low sort of bush till now, but all of a sudden we've got some little bit of uh, fire eyes starting to happen around the place. A few hills on the left hand side of the road, still dead flat on the right. Right, that's where I just took the last bit of video from and I'm now on one of those hills on the left hand side of the road which actually means now on the right hand side of the road and we're overlooking and that's the ocean right out there I'll have a bow peep at that to tick but flat low-lying wetlands And then the road disappearing into the distance. And right out there is indicated as the ocean. And then there's a bay comes in. Now these hills aren't all that tall, but sometimes this goes to show any elevation is better than no elevation to give you an idea of the surrounding countryside. And this is just a, it's obviously farmland, because there's a fence out there through the salt lake. That's where we're going. The countryside's starting to change a little bit. Well, let's hop into this mobile jukebox and keep going. And the sides of the road have become a blaze of colour again with the uh, wildflowers all over the place. Really looking at the picture. Oh, the road sides up here at the moment are just an absolute picture. And again, I've, pictured, I've picked pretty much the, uh, the thin bits of it, but by gee, it's beautiful. Really pretty. We're approaching the Overlander, which is a turn off for Denham Shark Bay, which is uh, we turned around the corner here a few years back, and uh, the radiator just went off, and that was it. Busted radiator, and had to have the, truck, the car towed in by truck into uh, Shark Bay to have the uh, new radiator fitted. So uh, we're doing all right at the moment. Not a bad day's journey so far. Oh, look at this. Shark Bay World Heritage Area. This is all new. Okay, this is the overlander here. Williams Park, the caravan is pulled straight out. Fix him up. Now, the uh, countryside's been pretty much like this for about the last hundred odd kilometres and uh, the wildflowers are nowhere near as prolific as they were further up the track. Um, no doubt there's been plenty of rain here because it's nice and green, but um, for some reason or other, um, where the, uh, the, the, the uh, surrounding areas were fairly flat, um, the wildflowers were far more pro prolific. Um, a bit more up and down in this particular area. We're now south of Billabong. Um, I think the last time we showed you was back at the Overlander, so uh, uh, it's certainly changing countryside. Now I've just spent an hour on the side of the road replacing a fan belt. Not really quick time, but still. Uh, it's been done and uh, just checking the belt now. And these road tanks have been here for as long as I can remember. I mean, I was only a kid when I came up. The uh, the roof over the top of them is fairly new, but the tanks themselves, they've been here forever and uh, they were a sort of a standard feature along the road once upon a time. There's something to write a song about, fields of gold. There are a whole heap of uh, photo opportunities on the way in here. From what I could see, there's nothing to take pictures of. 
Now that there is something to take pictures of, there's no photo stop. Anyhow, this is Cal Barry on the road on the way in. If we can get this bloody camera working. Right, oh, this is Cal Barry. We stayed somewhere in here, somewhere along the way. A years back, I believe, and uh, it tells me the place is still there, but <laughs> yeah, I don't remember what it was. This was the old view. The accommodation along here. Used to be a small shop over here. And there's the river. You know, across here, you could fish on the other side. This is quite nice. Very nice. right over there too, but that cost a pretty penny or three. Yeah, this place has certainly come on a bit in 30 odd years, that's for sure. Thankfully, looks like not the mad scramble that we've got down at the... Um, Upper Coral Bay very much more civilised. Oh, the mask, yeah. If you enjoyed this video, there are over 500 more just like it on this channel. Subscribe and hit the notification bell and we'll let you know when the next video is available. If you liked this video, hit the like button and feel free to share with your friends. Thanks for watching.